Aloha folks and welcome back to Species Artificial Life Real Evolution. Don't worry, our save is well and good. I don't think well and good is an expression, but whatever. There's a new cool... Uh, there's been like a few hotfixes. And as you can see here, we can see the type of biome that we ho are hovering over with our cursor and temperature, which is uh, really cool. But uh, first, we are going to go through the comments as we always do and uh, see the most important things that I've uh, taken into account from your suggestions. First, let's uh, go ahead and follow one of the su suggestions and move one of these gill creatures into the pond area because uh, as it seems, uh, the... actually, let's find a good place for it. How hot was it up here, actually? Where did they, we get them from? It was about 10, 15 degrees. Okay. Uh, Alright, let's put them down over here. Beach. Temperate rainforest. Yeah, woodland. Mm, 13, 14 degrees. Perfect. The idea there is because the population pressure is probably quite high here, so we want to spread them out, and this pond that we've got going here in the middle seems quite decent, so thank you for that suggestion. One of the questions I had was, how did you import custom creatures? And um, the answer is, uh, you actually have to export a creature first. How do you export a creature? Well, let's actually go over it. Alright, so here we have our lovely little creatures uh, bathing in the water. We'll select one of them here, and as you can see, there's genetic engineering and there's export creature. Uh, we You just click export creature, you uh, save the name, write a name, uh, and then it will, uh, it will save. And then you can import them in any map you want afterwards. So yes, that's how I imported creatures. Some people pointed out how the creatures died by watching the time lapse, and it was because they would keep grazing it and from the middle. And once the uh, the population in the middle died out, they they all died out. But um, yeah, it's sort of hard to 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 talk about something if you haven't watched it. You so you'll have to watch the last episode if you want to know what I mean. But yes, that is totally true. And I watched the time lapse, and I was fascinated. Uh, another very popular suggestion has been to create climate zones in this map and we are gonna do that we are gonna use the climate control devices uh, to actually create different climate areas in on our map but first I think I actually want to have a stable population going uh, you know we want to have a decent spread out population and then we'll mess around with the climate there's also some new features with the haunt fix there's water fertility uh, which is different from uh, land fertility, so that's kind of cool. Uh, we also have uh, some fixes to the carnivore-herbivore relationships and meat efficiency ratios and a bunch of that stuff. If you're interested, of course, you can just go on the developer's website or in the, on the Steam webpage and read about the hotfixes. Uh, this version we're running now is 0.11. Two, I believe. Uh, so that's that. Now we want to make sure that this specimen here su survives. So we're gonna actually, actually gonna feed it, and uh, hopefully, oh yeah, a bunch of children. Oh wow, okay, that was quite a population boom. That was uh, very very qu fast. They're, oh, they're actually kind of cute. Let's turn off the the thought bubbles and take a look at them walking underwater. I mean, what, what would you call them? It's nothing like we we have in in the world right now, I'd say. Slightly worried though. Um, it seems like the creature cap is gone. Pretty sure we had it at like 700 or 500. We're at 900 creatures now. It's not lagging though, so that's a surprise. Uh, I guess that's a good thing, but uh, I definitely don't want to risk it. There's this uh, cool new screen here that apparently shows how... Ooh, okay, the cap was much higher. I don't remember changing that cap to 1,200, but it seems to be working just fine. Uh, here you can see how... Uh, I guess it's not actually changing. The efficiency isn't changing at all. 
I don't know what the provided means here, but it's uh, it's some sort of debug screen uh, that you can get up as you press H. <coughs> uh, in fact, let's actually change the world options. Let's see. Mm, let's do oh niches. Ah. What does niches do? Raises and lowers in-game food efficiency. Uh, niches adjust the efficiency of every type of food source in the game independently to try and encourage creatures to occupy all available habitats in the game. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. We're trying that. Niches. That seems uh, pretty cool. So if we start speeding this up, it basically, I guess, not only does do our creatures evolve over time, but uh the oh this is so cool we're finally getting that that color variation uh that i want and that i enjoy and uh yeah the the a actual habitats themselves the f uh, grazing efficiency of different types of grass and things change over time in order to try to uh get creatures to spread out that's pretty cool Let's actually get ourselves a little time lapse here, shall we? Alright, we're back. Let's uh, take a look at what we've created so far. It uh, wasn't a super long time lapse there, but there's definitely be some, some, some changes here. You can see, oh wow. We're actually going to go through some of these uh, specimens individually and take a look. Uh, Web of Life there. Oh, no, no. Oh, actually here we can see quite the separation of some individuals from each other which is pretty interesting. We're going to see if we have some carnivores as well. But okay, so these are our main groups right now. We have... Uh, oops, that was not... Oh, oh, I'm always lost. Here we go. Uh, Cytor Shimium. Uh, Cytor Shimusium. Uh, cool green creatures there. We have... Uh, this herb, they're both herbivores here. We also have Temur, Tremor, Shima. I can't read that shit. I mean, this is all. Uh, it's actually kind of a cool system how this stuff is named. There's, there seems to be quite an almost infinite number of uh, uh, possible names there. But let's see. Uh, there's also some herbivores here. Something just uh, mutated. We have these guys, also herbivores. We have these guys, which are also herbivores. Do we have any carnivores? Not at all. Ooh. Oh, quite an interesting uh, specimen right there. Minor species. Probably won't survive very long. Uh, but they have, like, claws that stick into the ground. Uh, and then we have a couple of specimens growing a bit longer legs there. Uh, so, let's actually go ahead and take a look at these green ones. Oh, wow, you have quite a neck. So, we can actually go into the overview. We can see the age of the specimen. They're much older than they should be, I think. 84? Oh, there. Alright. 64, 62, I guess, is the average age of the species there. Um, oh, you died again. You know what, let's pause so we can actually read this. 27. Uh, lukewarm blooded um, determines how much energy metabolism. So there's different kinds of uh, blood temperature. It's not just warm or cold. There's like everything in between, as far as I've understood. Optimal internal temperature. We've seen this before. Herbivore smooth uh, chitin. That's their the stuff on their skin. 
or their body, rather, what, what it's covered in. Uh, optimization, breathe best in water, okay. And you can see the gills there. You can also see uh, the health capacity and how much this is compared to other things, I guess, uh, pathetic. Minimal energy capacity, decent walking speed, low stamina, decent swim speed, minimal st uh, swimming stamina, mostly harmless, and uh, quite a simple creatures in terms of, in terms of, in terms of growth cost. You can see gluttony, laziness, aggression, um, cowardice, amorousness. Ooh, not a very amorous species, is it? Uh, climate sensitivity and so on and so forth. Empathy and motivation is there as well. Uh, I guess I can't see the f uh, values for these ones here, uh, which is strange. It's probably a UI issue there. Uh, energy wise, physiology, physiology, I, oh, this is actually, I haven't actually taken a look at this in quite a while, unless it's new. You can see the volume, the mass, and the size of the actual creature, uh, the size of the things, the genes, we've seen this before, and then the species in general, you can actually look at statistics for the actual species, um, we were looking at individuals before, but this is for the entire species. Um, <laughs> or this one is harmless and very primitive growth cost. Rapidly exhausted. Physiology, and so on and so forth. But, seems like we haven't actually had any major uh, developments so far. Actually, I want to find the cool... Yeah, you guys. There. So. No. Oh yeah, it is you. No? Uh, can I find you? Yeah, you're the one. Okay. I thought you were much bigger than I, uh, I expected. Or no, I expected you to be bigger. You're much smaller than I expected. All right, let's start placing down our climate control devices. This uh, is going to have a target value of 0 0.8. So we're going to have a big savanna area, I think, is what we're aiming for here in the south. And uh, I don't actually know the spacing of these things. I guess we'll have them quite close to each other. It's quite an infertile area as well. So we'll place down this one fertility device and see uh, what happens. Oh, actually, we might not need that. If I just remove that, what happens? Does anything change? Not really. Well, damn. Ugh. My, uh... Actually, let's see if... Yeah, because I crashed, but there might be an autosave. So this was from... Ele yeah, alright. We're loading the autosave, hopefully. Yeah, we were messing around with the... Thank the lord. Yeah, I was messing around with these ones, but uh, it didn't really work out. Like, uh, it crashed the game for some reason. Don't really know why I was removing them, and uh, it just stopped stopped working. Ah, uh, I've had three crashes now. Uh, it's always when I'm close to finishing off removing these devices, so I'm actually not going to do that. I'm going to leave them there even though it's not as cold as I wanted it to be. But uh, we might... Ooh, let's have like a really cold area over here. Alright, I've been playing around a bit. Lots of crashes. I think it's definitely something to do with removing climate devices. Even if I give it a few minutes between removing each device. I think like the next one I remove here or anywhere really will uh, will cause a crash so I'm not gonna do that uh, it might have ruined our, our world but then again if the developers watching that's something uh, there's a bug report for you uh, unfortunately it seems like removing climate devices crashes the game uh, or the simulation don't really know why also our species are just developing on the coast of course we haven't really let the simulation run long enough here. Looks like we do have some specimens 
crossing into the land. Uh, they're anaerobic. That's that's very good. Oh, they're becoming like almost not crocodiles. Ooh, that one has a cool tail. All right. Yeah, they're definitely spreading into the land. That's very good to see. Uh, but the places we did put climate <laughs> devices in have not uh, really become um, populated at all. They've only served to sort of further uh, distance uh, some populations from each other. Anyway, uh, that will have to be it for this episode. I know we haven't actually run the game for long, but we took a look at uh, the new features. We've uh, run the simulation a bit. We've seen um, uh, the crashes from your suggestions in terms of the climate control devices, but we've also spread the population. Our world is doing well. The game is running really well. And uh, yeah, things, things are looking bright. So as always, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, tell your friends about the video, share it, sharing is caring, I really appreciate it, and uh, I'll see you later. This has been Game Gabster, farewell.